Royal Stanley of Oregon Pacific Financial Advisors, offering securities through United Planners Financial Services member FINRA SIPC, guides clients with empathy in discovering and reaching their financial goals and creates financial plans for clients so they can live their life by design. In these episodes, he relates his financial insights and discusses timely topics. Royal strives for excellence and has a passion for sharing his knowledge and supporting his community. Now, on to the show. Hey, Royal. How you been? I'm good. How are you doing, Eric? I'm fantastic. I'm so excited to get into today's podcast, but you are in a highly regulated industry. Yes, I am. And because of that, sometimes we have a disclosure that needs to be read. So let's do it. All right. Here's the disclosure for today. Discussions in this show are for educational purposes only. Information presented should not be considered specific investment advice or a recommendation to take any particular course of action. Always consult with a financial professional regarding your personal situation before making any financial decisions. The views and opinions expressed are based on current economic and market conditions and are subject to change. All investing involves risk, including the potential for loss of principal. Securities offered through United Planners Financial Services, member FINRA, SIPC. Advisory service offered through Oregon Pacific Financial Advisors, Inc. Oregon Pacific Financial Advisors and United Planners are independent companies, and neither Oregon Pacific Financial Advisors nor United Planners offers tax or legal advice. Okay, now that we've taken our medicine, can we get on with the show? Let's go. Hello, and welcome to Life by Design with Royal Stanley of Oregon Pacific Financial Advisors. Royal, what's going on? Nothing much, just enjoying this nice uh, spring weather that we're having. Nice. All right. Well, we often talk about the weather at the beginning of the podcast, but we're talking about something more important than that today. What is it? You know what we're talking about? Friendship. Oh, <laughs> nice. I so, appreciate that, Royal. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I really have been coming around and, uh, you know, I think other people are good for us as human beings. So, yeah. uh, you know, I go, I go through phases. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it's antisocial behaviors start coming out a little bit, but you know, other people are really important to our well-being and health. And we're seeing more and more studies come out that really talk about this. And I think it's something we've begun to forget or lose track of in this modern age. So I thought it'd be really valuable just to spend, you know, about a half hour going over some of the things that we're seeing both in research and anecdotally about how important social connections and retirement are for people yeah. for longevity and for health. And I think there's some really interesting research out there where those connections keep us alive and they keep us healthy. So uh, I thought it'd be fun to just talk about those. Yeah. I find it interesting. I'm, I'm really interested to hear what you have to say as far as the research that you've looked up. I was listening to a couple of doctors. This is Oh, a good year ago, maybe a year and a half at this point, because it was really related, obviously, to the pandemic. And they were talking about the fact that if, if people had established relationships, right, when they went into lockdown, they utilized and they utilized the phone, they utilized social media, they utilized texting, those different things to keep in contact. They actually enjoyed some of the lockdown part of it, right, because it was a time to focus on themselves, focus on some of the things that they were doing around the house, and it gave them an excuse not to be out. Right. But the, the people that didn't have well established relationships found it miserable. And because what little interaction they had, they just didn't have hardly any at that point. So it was an interesting comparison. So I'm, I'm really interested to hear what you have to say. Yeah. And that's something that just anecdotally we're, we're seeing here is the effect that the pandemic took on people's health, especially in retirement. Yeah. Where you didn't have those social connections, you were kind of stuck in the house a little bit uh, and you didn't have those interactions. And the effect that that had on your physical health, but, but also on your mental health is a very real thing. So, you know, the first piece of, of research that we pulled, that was actually a meta-analysis. So this is um, a study of a study or a number of studies. So this is looking at 148 different studies. And it found that individuals with strong social relationships had a 50% increased likelihood of survival compared to those with weak or insufficient social relationships. Wow. And they put that on par with risk factors like obesity and smoking. Mm. And I really? just, I, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, if you're, if you're smoking around a gr group of friends, 
you you might just be offsetting the smoking. You but know, if you're a fat smoker with no friends, right? You're done right. for. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> yeah. So at least at least go make a friend or or do something. Yeah. But no, we 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 just see it all the time. And I think in this world where more and more people are tied to their phones mm. and not to conversations with other people, it's becoming harder and harder to build relationships. Uh, fun, funny story. We had a new neighbor join our neighborhood mm-hmm. and my daughter uh, had, had just briefly met their nine-year-old. My daughter's eight and we were coming home from Costco and she just says, you know, I'm going to have a play date with her today. And I was like, well, we only met her once. I mean, yeah. I don't know how these things work, you know? <laughs> so, and, and, you know, she was very brave. She was like, okay, dad, you're going to come with me, but you know, I, I'm going to go do this. So we knocked on, on, you know, the neighbor's house. They were very gracious. The daughter was super excited to have somebody come over and play with her. And you, you realize that like, this is a natural human thing. You meet your neighbors, but it really doesn't happen very often anymore. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I had a great conversation with, uh, uh the, uh, the, uh, adults there. Uh, but it was just, it was just fascinating to see kind of that childlike bravery right. that you have as a young person, but then sometimes that starts to disappear. And, you know, one thing that, that we talk about quite often is as an adult, how hard it is to make friends. And especially if you're a man mm-hmm. building those social relationships are really hard. You know, you look at your kind of list of friendships that you have for a lot of men, uh, you know, my age and they're in their forties, you look at that list and you're like, okay, these are people I knew in high school or college. And there's not many people after that. Mm -hmm. And and that's, I think just a social function of, uh, you know, how we operate in the world now. So I think that connection piece is just so essential and it's really something you have to cultivate almost like, you know, an exercise routine of how do you stay connected in this world? So I thought we'd just go over a few different things and and talk uh, talk through those things if that works for you. Yeah, absolutely. And and as you said that I was thinking about, um, I took a trip recently to to Seattle uh, for a funeral and got together with a couple of my high school friends that we've been connected for a really, really long time. And really the only other guy friends that I have that that I see really often are the husbands of my wife's friends, right? And so we're, 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 now we're a group of eight, right? So it's four couples, but it's still, the relationship really blossomed because of my wife's connection to the ladies. All the ladies get together all the time and the guys get together every once in a while. But it's, if that hadn't happened, if my wife hadn't been friends with them first, I wouldn't have been friends with these guys probably. Cause just, you know, cause I'm a hermit. <laughs> I'm mm-hmm. in my garage doing mm-hmm. something or, or whatever. So yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I think this is something that women just have such a leg up on us for is yeah. they're just much better at making these social connections and, uh, you know, reaching out and checking in and, and that sort of thing. Yeah, um, yeah, it's, it's it's interesting calling some of the people that, that I've met and just saying, hey, how you doing? They're like, why, why are you calling me? Like, just you just try to be a friend. Just trying yeah, to be a friend. That's it. Um, you know, and, and I think, you know, we can, we can kind of start with that is, is staying connected with those old friendships is really important, you know, mm-hmm. especially as you age. But we also know that as you get older, you start losing those friends, you know, and that's something yeah. where um, you, you really have to look at cultivating those new relationships. Um, if you've ever heard of the uh, writer and author and coach, uh, Dan Sullivan. Mm-hmm. Dan Dan has a great anecdote that, that he's he's decided that he's going to live to 158 years old. Oh. And so he he's putting together plans for this. But I think one of his most interesting ones is that because he's going to live so long and there there's people that he is friends with and has been friends with for 50, 60 years, that he needs to make some new friends. He needs to start making friends with 20 and 30 year olds in building those relationships because if he just keeps his current cohort that as he gets older, he will lose that, lose those and he won't have anyone to talk to. And I think what, what a great way of looking at expanding your social circle. Um, you know, you, you have to make sure you do that, uh, in a not creepy way. You know? <laughs> I appreciate the, the caveat there. 
Don't make it creepy. Got it. Okay. Don't make it creepy. But you know, I, I think some of the 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 best ways of really maybe meeting some people outside of that generation is you know joining a social club of some kind. Mm-hmm. You know, in our rotary, we've got a, a large age range of people in their eighties all the way down to people in their their twenties and thirties, and that's a great way of kind of refilling and uh, making new friends, kind of refilling that that social engagement there. Being part of an organization, you know, uh, church is another great one, mm-hmm. you know, it, and, and really it's maybe getting involved in building those relationships with people who wouldn't be your normal co- cohort. Uh, and then volunteering. You know, I think volunteering is really one of the best social things that we can do because not only are we making relationships with new people, but we're also giving back yeah. and really doing something outside of ourselves. So those three things right there, being engaged in, you know, a social club, in a church, uh, or looking for volunteer opportunities are excellent ways of finding that engagement with other people um, and exercising that social muscle. That's what we really want to be talking about and encouraging people to do because you don't need a whole lot of new friends. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't need to be be the uh, cruise ship director where we know everybody, but it's really those deep relationships where, hey, if you're having a bad day, sending someone a text or being able to call them makes a world of difference for people's well-being. Yeah. And I think there's a fine line between friendship and, I don't want to say acquaintance because it's deeper than acquaintance, but I've, I've known a lot of older folks that have become mentors, right? Mm-hmm. And they find such value in those relationships, even though maybe they wouldn't be, you know, I'm using air quotes here, but friends right? Because maybe they're 65, 60, 70, and they're mentoring somebody in their 20s, or they're mentoring even teenagers. They look forward to those relationships. They look forward to those conversations because it is a give and take. And they, you know, they are giving back for sure because they're volunteering. Um, and maybe they're not a quote unquote friendship, but those relationships are still very important and keep them engaged. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know, and that, that's another great point here is, is that's another form of social connection and a way of giving back and thinking of, uh, outside yourself. Now, you might not go zip lining together, but, yeah. you know, <laughs> having a cup of coffee or sharing yeah. a meal every once in a while, you know, is a way of just building those relationships and uh, being connected. Yeah. yeah. So and the, the interesting thing now is we have these great tools in our pockets that keeps us connected to everything in the world. But here's the caveat. There is so much misinformation out there and predators on some of these social Mm -hmm. networks that you have to be really, really careful. And we do feel, and and, you know, we, we haven't seen as much research in the older cohort, the older generations, but we're seeing a ton of research of the damage that social media does to younger people. Yeah. You know, the effect of Instagram on young women's self-esteem is devastating. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we we want to use these tools, but we want to use them prudently. We want to make sure we know who we're talking to. If somebody, you know, out of the blue calls up and says, yep, I'm a supermodel. I'm just looking for, you know, an older man to take care of me. Probably not, probably not a supermodel. Those, um, those love traps that are being set and we're, we're seeing yeah. them and hearing those stories. Be careful with that, but use those tools sparingly, but they can can be very powerful to keep people connected Mm -hmm. as long as you have that kind of personal relationship to start with. Yes. Yep. I think that's very important. See them face to face before you FaceTime them because you can filter anything. And I, I, I would love for them to... And Instagram is not listening to me because, uh, you know, they aren't going to take my suggestion, but I would love for them to ban filters. Let's just be honest. Um, filters are just horrendous tools to fake everything. And like you said, it's, it is devastating to, to especially younger girls. Um, mm-hmm. And it bothers me. I've, I've been a part of a couple of groups. That it's like Instagram versus reality. And it shows the pictures side by side. And I don't know how people get the copies of them, but they get them before the filter. And it's, it's a joke, right? I mean, and, and people are living in their little fake lives that again, it's, it's, it's touching people in a very negative way from the young to the old, especially. Yeah. 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 And I, and I think that's another piece, um, not to get too far off of our original topic here, but 
the world is changing so quickly now mm -hmm. that um, people are going to be be using these tools to fool you, yeah, uh, pretty easily, and they're convincing. You know the, these these deep fakes, these uh, voice replicators that can take someone's voice mm -hmm. and just make them say whatever they want. That's a terrifying thing. That's something we're going to be seeing more and more of. Uh, yep. So you really have to be careful here to make sure you know who you're talking to. And once again, having that face-to-face -face relationship for your health is so much more val valuable and powerful there. Yeah. So the next stage that we want to, to talk about here is, you know, looking at hobbies and interests, you know, what, what are your shared passions with, with folks? Mm -hmm. And much like, you know, I was, I was spending some time uh, when my daughter was uh, doing M Matilda, the musical, I spent some time in, in the high school, the local high school. And it's funny, I, I saw the list of all the different classes they had for the kids. And I think there was 20 different classes, all from like Model UN, Pokemon cards, mm -hmm. you know, French club, all of these different things. And the thing I think we forget about is there, there are these opportunities as adults. You just have to seek them out a little bit more. It's yeah. not as easy as just walking into the bathroom and seeing the list. You might just have to do some research on, you know, what, what types of things are you interested in and, and what might be those shared passions? Um, you know, it could be, could be sewing, could be quilting. Um, you know, there, there, there's so many different things out there. Um, probably one of the best hubs that you can use, you know, go to your local library. Your library can act as some of the social mm. hubs. Um, also community centers are a great place to go and kind of find out what's going on there and just asking the questions. Obviously online is always a place, but, um, this is just another way of building those connections and nurtures, nurturing relationships, which is so essential as we get older. Yeah. Yep. So the other part of all this is <clears throat> what happens when you move out of your neighborhood and move into a retirement community? So there you're kind of resetting everything. And sometimes it, it really comes down to the individual of how engaged they want to be. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're, they're moving in there, not necessarily because they necessarily want to, but kind of need to downsize mm -hmm. and make that transition. But all of these retirement communities have really recognized the value that human relationships have on us. And they have a lot of things to be engaged in. And it's your choice. Do you want to come out of your room and engage in those? Or do you want to kind of stay locked in there? So yeah. we just encourage our clients to have those, uh, have those things going on in their lives that foster that. You know, I, I, I was terrified to watch a, a client retire a couple of years ago. And I asked him, well, what are you going to do in retirement? And I, you know, known him for years. And he's like, I have no idea. And that's the scary thing. Mm -hmm. Single guy, family's, uh, you know, four hours away. It's a question of what are you going to do to keep engaged on a day-to-day -day basis to keep yourself healthy and yeah. to kind of keep your, your, your mental well-being ongoing for the rest of retirement. And that's where we really tell people, Find that hobby, find that thing you're going to do. Cause honestly, you can only golf so much. Exactly. Yeah. You yep. know, I'd, I'd like to try to find that limit one day, but uh, <laughs> you know, I'd love to be able to do it more than one or two times a year at this point. But yeah. for a lot of people, there's only so much golf they can play. There's only so much bridge they can play there. You have to kind of get involved in other things um, to really stay sharp. And the biggest way there is uh rebuilding your relationships with family uh if you have you know kids or grandkids that's a great way but be very aware especially with grandkids that you your your window there as grandpa is from about two to 12. Mm -hmm. that's your 10-year window where they they really want to spend time with you and um and just kind of realize that once they hit those teen years going back to grandma's house doesn't hold the same appeal as it once did. Mm -hmm. You know, I, <laughs> I, I've seen grandparents, you know, buy the house with the pool once the kids are, you know, 15 and it's, it's unlikely they're going to be seeing the kids very much because the kids have other things on their mind and it's not grandma's pool. Yeah, no, <laughs> you're absolutely right. So we, we want to, you know, continue on those relationships with family. 
Uh, one of the great things with family is you can pass down traditions. You know, you talking about that mentoring relationship is making a list of, you know, what are the, tra the traditions that you received from your family, from your mother and father, and having those conversations with your grandkids, with your kids about what those things are and why they were important. Not necessarily, not necessarily to say you have to do this, but as a way of passing along that history. Um, you know, those, those stories that we hold inside of us will die with us unless we share them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, one, one of the, 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 the best evenings of my life was uh, we had gotten a kind of a book of prompts for uh, my wife's grandfather. And, and, you know, we weren't expecting him to write in it. You know, we were trying to get him a gift that would mean something. Mm -hmm. And it was incredible because he started opening it up and it was, the question was, you know, what was your first car? And he goes on to explain his first car and how he used it as a racer and, you know, yeah. um, what was a great memory. And he just started sharing these things. And there's just so much power in that storytelling. And so that's another way that you can nurture those family relationships is by creating those moments, both with, you know, yourself, but also with those other generations. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. That's, that's something I think is missing. And I know that we've talked about that a little bit before on the podcast. I remember which podcast it was, but leaving that legacy, being mm -hmm. able to, whether you're using uh, technology is so easy, right? I remember buying our first camcorder, right? <laughs> had the little tapes that you put in there and you charge a battery and, and all that stuff. Now every phone can hold hours and hours and hours and hours of video, right? And, and most everybody has a phone that has a camera on it. So why not videotape those things, those stories that you're telling, um, mm -hmm. or even the audio recording of it? Well, you know, again, writing it down would be great, but I'm too lazy for that. Let's be honest. It's going to be a recording. It's going to be a video. I'm not writing it out. And I don't like to type either, Royal. Just let you yeah. know. But, hey, but at this point, I mean, there's services that can, that can do yeah. all that for you. Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it's, it's really incredible what can happen. And, you know, just, just those stories, when you think about, here's the stories I have from my parents and they're both gone now. Mm -hmm. So I'm really the last person that kind of has those memories and are carried on who Ray and Linda Stanley were. Yeah. And so how do I pass that down to my kids and mm -hmm. then maybe hopefully one day their kids to say, Hey, here's, here's where you come from. And so, you know, th those audio visual methods are fantastic, but there's nothing like sharing those stories, sharing those, yeah. uh, those funny times, those hard times to say, Hey, here's where you came from. Mm -hmm. And this is why you're here today. Yeah. And for the love of everything, holy, please print pictures, right? How many pictures <laughs> do we have on our phones or our computers or whatever that, that are in digital? And there, again, there are services out there that you can just send your pictures into the, and they'll send you a book with all yeah. the pictures in it. And, and I think that's a lost art as well is to be able to look through some pictures and, and trigger some memories and say, Oh, this is when we did that. Da, da, da. Do you remember how, you know, and then the stories just start flowing because of that, that, that visual. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Th and I think that's just so interesting. I think that's a shift from when we grew up where you had 24 shots in a camera. That's right. <laughs> and that was it. Yeah. You didn't 15 of them were them. good. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you didn't get to see them until like two weeks after vacation, you got back and got it, got it from now. We just have such an overabundance of that, that sometimes the, yeah. you know, photos are just undervalued now. Yep. Uh, but I couldn't agree more, you know, printing them out, writing who these people are on the back, making those notes are just super important, you know, as you're trying to uh, pass that legacy down to your, your family and your, your kids and grandkids. Yeah. yeah. So g getting back onto topic, right. Where you've got folks that, and, and my dad retired early. So that was kind of a, a challenge for him. He retired at 55, which is fantastic. And he had hobbies. He was a carpenter. He had all sorts of hobbies. And so he was connected with a lot of people. But one thing I know he struggled with right off the bat was his friends were still working. Yep. Right? Yep. And so, and that happens no matter what age you retire, some of your friends are still going to be working. And for all you retirees out there, God bless you. Family loves you. Understand that. But your kids are still working, right? We've had to have this conversation with my father stopping by. Hey, what's going on? I'm working. I'm still, I still have to work for a living, you know? 
Uh, just but because it, I'm at home doesn't mean I'm <laughs> not working. Right. right. He's been on a couple of recordings before, you know, just kind of <laughs> popping in. But it, it's and I love that. But at the same time, I think that that's that desire and that need to connect and stay connected. Um, and it's just I think it's a matter of kind of scheduling your time and making sure that you know when people are going to be available so you can spend that time with them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think that's that's always the challenge of the fire movement, the financially independent retire early watching some of these, these folks say, Hey, we're going to sacrifice and scrimp so we can retire early. That's wonderful. What are you going to do with all that free time? Yeah. Yeah. Cause not, not everybody, you know, wants to do that uh, or make that transition. Now that really comes down to, I think, purpose and what do you want to leave behind and what are you working for, which are all great questions to uh, analyze and probably as its own podcast as well. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think, you know, today as we, uh, we kind of wrap up here, um, you know, there, there's just so much importance here. It's, it's, you know, I would look at your relationships as being on par with, you know, your diet and your exercise mm. because they give us purpose. They give us meaning in our lives and they make us healthier. You know, not all relationships, you know, <laughs> look out, look for those positive sources. There's, yeah. there's people who are going to uh, lift you up. But it's just so important that I think it's it's good that we spent some time here this morning on this. Because with, without kind of that encouragement and that reminder, it's easy to say, I'm not going to pick up the phone. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to invite them out for coffee. You know, it's just, we're, we're all too busy. But reaching out is kind of really the first step. And let me tell you, as a, you know, 40-year-old person, Making plans with your friends is, especially with kids, is just an ongoing thing of basically, hey, let's get together. Okay, great. It'll be in three months. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. You know. Yeah. Well, what, what, the last thing that I've got, Royal, is, is that my wife and I made a deal a long time ago because we're from two very different cultures. She's Hispanic and I'm very white, as most people have seen on the video. So <laughs> we made a deal that no matter what food we were cooking or trying, we would try it of the other person's culture, right? Because we, if we've never had it before, we've got to try something out. And that has been a beautiful part of our relationship for a very long time. And we've carried that into some of other, our other activities as well. Um, I tried salsa dancing. Uh, I'm not that great. I'll be honest. She's great. <laughs> She's fantastic. But we did that together. And I think that, that people need to adopt something like that. Like you brought up some resources earlier, you know, community uh, centers, uh, pe places where people can reach out the library. I encourage you, please try something new and make a deal with a friend or your spouse to, to try something. Even if you don't, you have no idea if you'll like it, what do you got to lose? Right. You're going to lose some time. You're retired. You got nothing but time, right? <laughs> try something new. If you don't like it, don't do it again. But I think that people will find like pickleball is huge, right? That's a huge thing. And, and people are like, what, what is this? And they look into it and all of a sudden they kind of catch a fever and it's good exercise and it's fun and, and all that. But if people are just willing to try something they've never tried before, I think that they'll find some, some new friends in those circles. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, you know, that, that's really what we're, we're designed for as human beings. We are social creatures and, and without that, we, we don't thrive. Yeah. Yeah. This is a great podcast, Royal. Any, anything else for clothes, clothing's not clothing thoughts, closing thoughts today, Royal. <laughs> well, for, for our clothing thoughts, uh, <laughs> where are closing... <laughs> yes, you go to the absolutely. community center or the library <laughs> retire folks that's one requirement clothing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but there are clubs that may be clothing free royal i'm not going to judge but i'm just saying no no not at the library absolutely not <laughs> no. oh goodness oh goodness all right closing thoughts here um we just encourage you to uh, Ha, look at look at your life. Do do an evaluation. Say, okay, where where are those areas where I could just put a little bit more effort, you know? And I'm going to get back a whole lot more than what I put in. Mm -hmm. And reminding yourself of that is is just so important. So, um, you know, usually we're talking about financial matters, financial planning, but um, this is just one that I think is important to share with folks of really all ages. So. Um, you know, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here today with you, Eric. I consider you a friend and, uh, it's, it's always, a, a an enjoyable time. So I'll pass it back over to you to finish this up. 
Well, I appreciate that. And I, I definitely consider you a friend royal uh, and a mentor to me. Uh, I've learned so much from your podcast. I will say this, I'm, I'm going to put a challenge to the audience. Um, if you have some things that you've tried and you've, you've really enjoyed them and it's something that you've found in retirement, email that to Royal because he's connected to a lot of people. And if people want some ideas, I'd love to see some ideas roll in and maybe on a future podcast, we can kind of discuss a couple of them that maybe we haven't heard of before Royal. Uh, so what, what email address can they use to, to email in some ideas for, to get active? Yeah, you could email me at royal at opfa.com or just visit our website. We have all of our contact information there. That's at opfa.com. Awesome. All right, Royal, thank you so much again. My pleasure. Good to see you, Eric. Good to see you too. And our last thank you goes to you, the listening audience. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to the Life by Design podcast with Royal Stanley. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe now button below. This way, when Royal comes out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. And we humbly ask that you share this podcast, rate it, and leave a review, as this actually does help others find the show. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. For everyone at Oregon Pacific Financial Advisors, this is Eric Johnson reminding you to live your best day every day. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Life by Design podcast. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available.